I enroll for embedded systems. Introduction to data analytics and machine learning. So introduction to modern application development. Project planning and control. So introduction to programming in Sikyata. So I did the health research fundamentals. Introduction to airplane performance. This is my 11th exam. I have certificate. I am an associate professor in chemistry at Pachayapas College, Chennai. Research scholar. I am a scientist in DRDO. Employed in a TVS group. I am a pediatrician. I am working in Chennai port. I am 17 years old now. Completed my 12th. Working at Yama Motors R&D. I am working in the RDR Cancer Institute in Chennai. I feel much happy to attend this exam. Learning experience is excellent. Whatever the questions posted in the forum, it's immediately being answered. That is an amazing work what they are doing at really. With respect to NPTEL, the quality of lectures and delivery, the contents to the students, no doubt, unquestionable. And it's too good. The examination today I really enjoy. I've been traveling more than two hours uh, daily. I just hearing that entire video conversation throughout my journey, like not sitting in home. was working in a different domain totally uh, like mainframes so the course which I took was introduction to modern application development so this uh, course was very helpful because I've learned new technologies the course content was very extraordinary to be precise even if you compare to other websites uh, they don't offer certification like uh, MIT or uh, any Carnegie Mellon open course or but this is a very good initiative by the IITs and IACs, which can improve the standard of education. I was expecting to get gold medal by IIT, but I don't know if it will be there or not. It's a nice opportunity for people outside of IITs to be able to take an exam that is conducted by IIT, so the standards are pretty good, obviously. I have learned more in these three months than taking some papers in the college. Even at the age of 50 plus, we are getting some enthusiasm to go through all these lectures and all those things. Another person from my college has taken it in another center and both of us feel that the teaching was absolutely brilliant throughout the course and it's not only theory, even practice is there. He went, they actually showed us through the flight lab and they actually had very, very practical examples. For youngster, definitely it is useful. But this type of courses, if you find in other places, it is very, very costly. But here it is, uh, for learning purpose, it is cheap. For obtaining a certificate, it is only a nominal fees. I appreciate uh, the initiative of MHRD and uh, the uh, strenuous efforts taken by uh, the IIT groups for uh, providing uh, uh, the latest and uh, technically sound education on online mode. This is the first time I felt that uh, some course for uh, working professionals and uh, it is well organized as such. Nowadays uh, doctors are expected to do a lot of research also apart from seeing patients. So this course helped me to learn a lot. It was a nice experience. It's wonderful in sitting along with the students and solving the problems. Makes us to be more concentrated with the course, to have a better deliverability of the content, to the recent trends are in par with the reputed institutions. This course is really like, uh, you know, bringing a bridge across what we are doing now and what we are going to do in the future. This program will be the harbinger of a big intervention in India in the area of online education so that we can address the grand challenge of providing high quality and useful education to a very, very large number, probably the largest number of youngsters in the world.
and rule for embedded systems. Introduction to data analytics and machine learning. So introduction to modern application development. Project planning and control. So introduction to programming in Sikyata. Why did the health research fundamentals? Introduction to airplane performance. This is my 11th exam. I have a certificate. I am an associate professor in chemistry at Pachayapas College, Chennai. Research scholar. I am a scientist in DRDO. I am employed in a TVS group. I am a pediatrician. I am working in Chennai Port. I am 17 years old now. I completed my 12th. I am working at Yama Motors R&D. I am working in the RDR Cancer Institute in Chennai. I feel much happy to attend this exam. Learning experience is excellent. Whatever the questions posted in the forum, it's immediately being answered. That is an amazing work what they are doing at really. With respect to NPTEL, the quality of lectures and delivery, the contents to the students, no doubt, unquestionable. And it's too good. The examination today, I really enjoy. I've been traveling more than two hours uh, daily. I was just hearing that entire video conversation throughout my journey, like not sitting in the home. working in a different domain totally uh, like mainframes so the course which I took was introduction to modern application development so this uh, course was very helpful because I've learned new technologies the course content was very extraordinary to be precise even if you compare to other websites uh, they don't offer certification like uh, MIT or uh, any Carnegie Mellon open course but this is a very good initiative by the IITs and IACs which can improve the standard of education I was expecting to get gold medal by IIT, but I don't know it will be there or not. It's a nice opportunity for people outside of IITs to be able to take an exam that is conducted by IIT, so the standards are pretty good, obviously. I have learned more in these three months than taking some papers in the college. Even at the age of 50 plus, we are getting some enthusiasm to go through all these lectures and all those things. Another person from my college has taken it in another center and both of us feel that the teaching was absolutely brilliant throughout the course and it's not only theory, even practice is there. He went, they actually showed us through a flight lab and they actually had very, very practical examples. For youngster, definitely it is useful. But this type of courses, if you find in other places, it is very, very costly. But here it is... Uh, for learning purpose, it is cheap. For obtaining a certificate, it is only a nominal fees. I appreciate uh, the initiative of MHRD and uh, the uh, strenuous efforts taken by uh, the IIT groups for uh, providing uh, uh, the latest and uh, technically sound education on online mode. This is the first time I felt that uh, some course for uh, working professionals and uh, it is well organized as such. Nowadays, uh, doctors are expected to do a lot of research also, apart from seeing patients. So this course helped me to learn a lot. It was a nice experience. It's wonderful in sitting along with the students and solving the problems. Makes us to be more concentrated with the course, to have a better deliverability of the content, to the recent trends are in par with the reputed institutions. This course was really like, uh, no, bringing a bridge across what we are doing now and what we are going to do in the future. program will be the harbinger of a big intervention in India in the area of online education so that we can address the grand challenge of providing high quality and useful education to a very very large number, probably the largest number of youngsters in the world.
प्लीज स्टार्ट संध्या a uh, very good morning and namaskar to all of you uh, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome all uh, the dignitaries stalwarts educationists learners uh, for the nptel awareness online workshop organized by nptel iit madras in organization with icfai university jaipur rajasthan and msp mandal sri shivaji college parbhani uh, maharashtra friends i sri vijay more Uh, registrar and spoc of this college uh, would like to welcome our today chief guest honorable uh, vice chancellor of uh, icfa university uh, professor dr hp singh uh, vishisht seva medal vsm thank you and welcome sir thank also you. i would like to welcome our mentor and principal of sri shivaji college uh, pro, uh, dr b u jadhav sir thank you sir uh, would like to welcome our resource person for today's uh, online workshop honorable das sir from iit uh, madras sir welcome you to this uh, online workshop uh, also i would like to welcome all the dignitaries from uh, nptel iit madras and other officials from nooks and corners of india i would like to welcome the spsu of icfi university and my counterpart uh, professor and uh, associate dean from icfi university dr uh, uh, saini sir also i would like to welcome rohidas tunde sir former spoc of this college and would like to welcome uh, other dignitaries like uh, uh, dr manindra uh, trihotri and uh, karthi ma'am from iit madras and all the dignitaries uh, so friends uh, on this bright morning uh, it is a bright day and uh, firstly i would like to request all the dignitaries to take this to take their virtual seats uh, this is uh, inaugural session and this inaugural session will continue for 10 minutes in that uh, our chief guest will uh, speak about uh, this online workshop then our main resource person will guide us about the workshop uh, friends as you know that the nptel has become a largest partner in swayam mhrd uh, government of india project uh, the journey of uh, nptel in last two decades have become a very visionary and uh, consistently uh, and uh, it has given the right direction and uh, guiding lamp to all the higher education system in india uh, at this juncture uh, nptel has uh, given us uh, more than 2000 uh, courses or moocs courses to uh, the learners and this time uh, for uh, for semester january to april 2022 uh, more than 12 plus lakh learners have already enrolled and still they are enrolling for the courses and uh, uh, this uh, journey is continuing uh, what i say that uh, the journey of nptel is really impressive and it is uh, giving us the guiding lamp to all the learners uh, moving forward now this is the time to introduce our uh, chief guest as i have already said that today we have two chief guests for this inaugural session the honorable vice chancellor of icfi university uh, professor dr h p singh sir who is a vishisht seva medal vsm and to introduce him i would like to request one of the faculty members from uh, icfi university dr manindra trihotri sir over to you dr manindra trihotri sir Uh, thank you sir thank you vijay sir <clears throat> first of all very good morning to one and all present here i dr manin triyotri from the ifa university jaipur would like to introduce the guest speaker from the ifa university honorable president of the ifa university jaipur professor dr hp singh vsm it is a matter of pride for us that our president dr hp singh sir supports a lot in setting up the ifa university jaipur as so i am nptel local chapter he always used to motivate the students and faculty members to use nptel lectures as reference for the class syllabus and also in participating the certification courses offered by a uh, swam nptel portal professor dr hp singh is a distinguished academician researcher and educational administrator he earns his phd from andhra university and mtech from iit khadakpur professor singh has been actively engaged in teaching research training 
Chatterjee for more than 38 years and has been a distinguished policy advisor, trainer, administrator, and institution builder. May I request our guest speaker from IFA University, President Dr. H. P. Singh Sir, to encourage and motivate the students and faculty with his words of wisdom. We are eagerly looking for your address and inspirational words, sir. Over to you, President Sir. Thank you, Dr. Manindar. Thank you, Dr. Vijay, uh, the registrar of uh, Shivaji College. Uh, dignitaries from NAPTIL, from IIT, Dr. Sarkar, Nisha, all other dignitaries. Dr. Jadav, the principal of uh, Shivaji College, all the distinguished faculties and uh, the academic staff of Shivaji College, my fellow professors, Dr. Saini, Dr. Manindar, all other faculties from the Science and Technology Department, and all the faculties who are online and the students. Good morning to you all. Uh, namaskar. Uh, today, this workshop, online workshop, which has been organized uh, by uh, the combination of IKFA University and Shivaji College and with guidance of NAPTEL, I think it's a very important workshop and very timely kind of conducted workshop. I have seen the kind of courses, certificates that are being offered by NAPTEL as part of offering as you know, the video lectures or online courses, they are very high quality, highest quality standards are maintained in those lectures. I want to share my own experience. Uh, last year, I had myself enrolled for one of the courses of NAPTEL and that was about ethical hacking. And I remember the uh, faculty was from IIT Kharagpur and I did that 10, 10 weeks course. It was a wonderful course. Of course, I didn't appear for the uh, certification because I uh, thought that may not be required at this stage. But the quality of lectures, video lectures was outstanding, uh, one of the best. So similarly, as brought out by uh, Mr. Vijay Mori, uh, there are thousands of courses which are being offered as part of NAPTIL offering. And it's a unique opportunity for all the faculties and the students to make use of this kind of treasure the quality of the packages of the certification of the courses, you can use it being in your places. You don't have to go anywhere. You can register. They are all free courses and they are the top quality courses. I'm sure if the faculties are aware, if the teaching and the academic staff of especially engineering, science and technology and management, if they are aware of the offerings of map theory, in the form the, of the courses that they are offering, they would be immensely benefited. I, I mark my word, you take up any of the courses in your own time and look at the quality of the course and then you get a certification from the IITs. You know, NAPTEL is formed by seven, six universities and one IISC and the best of the brains have gone into making these video courses and video, uh, you know, the lectures. Uh, this is something that is available to you at your free will and uh, as per your registration. This is an opportunity which has been given by Ministry of Education, formerly the MHRD. Uh, they have, as part of the offering in SWAM, you know, the SWAM is offering multi, you know, MOOC, open line, massive online courses. And the offering for science and technology engineering is coming from NAPTEL. And those courses in engineering and sciences are top of the line. So my uh, first day, I want to congratulate the organizers of today's workshop. That is the Shivaji College of Maharashtra, which is a prestigious college, and the Phi University under the ages of NAPTEL and the uh, IIT professional. I would like to congratulate you all for organizing this online workshop, awareness workshop, I'm sure the students and the faculties and the teachers and academic staff is going to immensely, immensely benefit if they pay attention to what is what is NAPTEL and what is it giving it to you. I think such opportunities in the digital domain today, which are available, should be known to each and every academic staff so that they can make best use of it. Or not only that, during my last uh, job as the Vice Chancellor of Ikwai University, Himachal Pradesh. We had also given one course to these uh, computer sciences uh, students 
credit, you know, uh, three credit, four credit, it was given to them. And they had taken the examination. Now, today with the national education policy implementation, which is happening now, there is a provision for academic bank for credit, ABC, where you can, you know, have the credit of all these, you know, whatever courses you do, this credit is stored into this academic bank of credit, and that can be used anywhere. It will remain there. Not only that, this gives you an opportunity, all the colleges which are not part of the IIT, to get a certification from IIT, to get the certification from the best brains and the best institutions in the country. So I think uh, uh, this will definitely benefit all the stakeholders, all the academic staff and faculties who are online on the YouTube on this particular thing. Uh, I would only say that I my best wishes to the workshop which is going to be held. I'm sure this is going to be a great initiative and great starting for the two institutions in particular. And of course, all those who are hearing students and faculties who are online on the YouTube, they are even if they are not from the two institutions, they are going to definitely get benefited. Uh, with these words, I would only say uh, my best wishes. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to say a few words. All the very best to you. Jai. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, uh, it gives me immense pleasure to thank you, sir, for your uh, uh, witty and masterly words about NPTEL. And especially with profound respect, I am indebted to you, sir, that uh, what you said about our institution. Really, uh, we look forward to work with you in future time. Thank you, sir, for your uh, remarks. Now, moving forward, uh, we have our second resource person, our mentor, under we, whose leadership we are marching forward, uh, principal of our institute, uh, Sri Shivaji College, uh, principal Dr. B.U. Zado, sir, is our leader. Uh, to introduce him, may I request our former SPOC and IQS coordinator of the college, Dr. Rohidas Nitunde, sir. Over to you, Nitunde, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, respected dignitaries uh, and uh, all the viewers. I am Dr. Vidas Nitonde, Associate Professor of English and Coordinator Internal Quality Assurance Cell, MSP Mandal, Sri Shivaji College, Parabhan. I am indeed pleased to introduce our beloved principal, Dr. Bala Sahib Jadav, sir, on this occasion. Friends, uh, Principal Dr. Jadav, sir, belongs to the discipline of physics and he is the supervisor as well as administrator for the last 12 years. He is leading MSP Mental Sri Shivaji College and the college has brought many laurels uh, in his tenure as the principal of this college. To name a few, uh, I would like to say that the college stood first and awarded uh, back the best college award from its uh, parent institution, that is Swami Ramanan Kirth Marathwada University's Best College Award. Principal Sir has also received the state level Best NSS Program Officer Award, as well as Government of Maharashtra bestowed its Jagar Zanimansa Award on our institution, and uh, University Grants Commission has also sanctioned so many schemes and a lot of funding under the able guidance and leadership of Principal Dr. Bala Sir Jadav Sir. And the schemes are respectively uh, College with Potential for Excellence, then uh, Mentorship for NAC of the five institutions, uh, higher education institutes under the UGC scheme called Paramarsh. And uh, we have been uh, accreditation ambassador to those five institutions which are going for first cycle of NAC accreditation. Then there are only 18 colleges in the country which are awarded with the scheme called STRIDE, Scheme for Transdisciplinary Research uh, for Indian as a Economy. And Shivaji College is one of the 18 colleges in the country which are uh, STRIDE units. Uh, again, in addition to that, uh, we have progressed a lot in teaching, learning, and research. We have brought innovations in these fields. Uh, I'm uh, pleased to say that under the able guidance of Principal Dr. Jadho, sir, Sri Shivaji College Parvani has emerged as a distinguished unit which has set up its own benchmarks for quality education. The last but the foremost thing is that 
principal dr jadhav sir he is also one of the uh, assessors of nag bangalore uh, i am sure that with his words you will know much about us and i invite all of you to once visit our campus and see what miracles professor jadhav sir is performing on our campus before i conclude i would like to request our beloved principal sir to address the gathering and motivate us principal jadhav sir <coughs> Hello. Uh, <coughs> Can you hear, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Audible. Audible. Yeah. Uh, chief guest for uh, inaugural program of uh, NPTEL IIT uh, Chennai sponsored one day NPTEL awareness online program being organized uh, by our college in the collaboration with uh, ICFA University Jaipur Rajasthan. Honorable Vice Chancellor of icfi university uh, dr uh, professor dr hp uh, singh vishishta uh, uh, seva medal <coughs> resource person from nptel iit madras anirbal uh, sip shankar das sir all the nptel iit <coughs> madras official uh, spoc of icfi university sri uh, ak Saini, the convener of the workshop of our college, SPOC and Registrar uh, Vijay Mure, uh, distinguishing uh, faculty members, principals, SPOCs and students from our region and across the nation. Also our IQC coordinator, Dr. Rohida Jirithunde and all the <coughs> dignitaries. I welcome you all of, all of, all of. Uh, I'm pleased to see this program uh, taking place through online mode it's the first of its kind of program being conducted uh, by any college in our region i think so the concept of traditional education has changed really within the last couple of years being physically present in the classroom is not the only learning option anymore not with the rise of internet and new technology at least nowadays you have access to quality education whenever and wherever you want as long as you can get online we are now entering the new era the revolution of online education massive open online courses mooc is essentially an a platform and a process of teaching through uh, pre recorded lectures resource video material uh, lectures notes assignment and quiz which are usually online and provide self assignment in a regular interval during learning the national program on technology enhanced learning begins offering open online course in march at, i think it is uh, 214 along with certificates from iits iisc uh, from those who completed the course successfully it is now possible for anyone outside the iit system be able to do on online certificate course from nptel and get a certificate from iits iits are reaching out and taking education to the uh, homes of people through this initiatives friends our college was established in 1961 we are celebrating our diamond jubilee being cp and nac a plus with 3.52 cgpa institute we shivajians have uh, set our own benchmark in online learning now it is high time to share our resource and resources knowledge expertise and principles with others and this online workshop is step forward in this direction as discussed earlier our association 
and journey with NPTEL begins uh, in July 2016. We are the first college in the region to establish local chapter, taking inspiration from us two universities and more than 50 colleges establish local chapter. I congratulate the continuous effort taken by uh, former SPOC, Dr. Ruidas Nitunde, for doing a progressive and sustainable work in the uh, keeping our local chapter active and vibrant in last six years. More than 1,000 students have earned NPTEL certificates during the last six years. Our uh, present SPOC and registrar of our policy, Vijay More, is brand ambassador as well as a star and working on footprint shown by his <coughs> predecessors. I congratulate the organizing committee and I'm sure that you all will learn many new things in this online awareness workshop. I'm also thankful to NPTEL team with my best wishes. I conclude here. And again, I welcome all with this be with the best wishes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir, for your uh, remarks. Uh, as it has been well said that uh, this year we are celebrating our Diamond Jubilee year. We are in 60s. Our principal, sir, is in his 57. So uh, what type of energy he is having, we can uh, get, get it. So under his able guidance, Today, our institute has become a model college okay, for other institutes. And uh, he, he, he has become the leader of leaders. These words have been uh, given by the experts from UGC. And so, so these are really motivating for all of us. And so uh, with this pride moment, I also thank to our parent institute, that is Maratwada Shikshan Prasarak Mandal, under the umbrella of Maratwara Shikshan Prasarak Mandal in Maratwara region. Now we 17 colleges and more than hundreds of uh, schools and junior colleges are working and under their able uh, leadership, our colleges are marching forward and forward. I also take this opportunity to thank our affiliated university that is Swami Ramananda Tirth Maratwara University, the first university who have started the CBCS pattern in Maharashtra. So as our, our journey towards excellence is going on, these two ladders, that is Maratwara Shikshan Prasarak Mandal and Swami Ramanand Tirth Maratwara University have always given us the guidelines. And on that guidelines, we are marching forward. So in coming times, it will be a high time for all of us to join together and uh, uh, togetherly we can do the best. Thank you once again. I take this opportunity to thank all the uh, two resource persons who has given their permission and uh, uh, their uh, their consent and their uh, guidance for their guidance i take this apology to thank as on behalf of convener of this uh, event and now moving forward the main part of uh, this workshop that is the uh, resource person honorable das sir will guide us uh, in this workshop but to introduce uh, uh, Honorable Das, sir, may I again request uh, Professor Dr. Manindra, sir, from ICFI Jaipur University. Professor Dr. Manindra, sir. Thank you, Vijay, sir. Thanks a lot. Moving right along now, we would like to introduce our resource person, Mr. Shiv Sankar Das. Mr. Shiv Sankar Das works as a network engineer at IIT Kharagpur. He did his master's degree from the same institute with specialization in microelectronics and VLSI design. Before joining IIT Kharagpur, Mr. Das has been served in the Indian Air Force as an airman in the technical trade and Punjab State Industrial Development Corporation as an executive engineer. During his tenure in IIT Kharagpur, he has also worked in the Biomedical Instrumentation Research Group and has two Indian patents in the areas of low-cost Doppler ultrasound system and non-invasive blood glucose monitoring system along with other members of the group. Since 2016, Mr. Das is associated with the NPTEL activities of IIT Kharagpur and has been actively participating in raising the awareness of program in the eastern part of the country. Now, may I request our resource person, Mr. Shiv Sankar Das, sir, to please start the workshop. Over to you, sir. Uh, respected uh, uh, 
Professor Dr. H. P. Singh, Visishreva Medal, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Ikfai University, Jaipur. Um, Professor Dr. Balasaheb Jada, Principal Sri Sibaji College. SPLCs of both the colleges, um, Professor Vijay More and Professor uh, Dr. Maninda Singh. Um, Dr. Saini from uh, Ikfai University, Jaipur. The faculty members, the students were connected with this program virtually. A very good uh, morning to one and all. It's a privilege for me to uh, stand before you and apprise on the new initiative or the initiative taken by uh, Ministry of Education uh, to popularize the online teaching method, online learning method, uh, which is now a common, which was not so before pre-pandemic era, but it has become a common thing. So during the, uh, I really thank both the colleges for organizing such an event. During the next two hours of talk, I'll try to cover the, uh, let me share my uh, screen and show you what will be, uh, what are the things that I'll be covering during my talk. Oh, sir. Sir, the was bend up. Das, sir, please unmute yourself. Das, sir, please unmute yourself. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Uh, should I start from the beginning, right? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, myself, Shiv Shankar Das. I am from IIT Kharagpur. I'll be talking on the NPTEL awareness workshop. Uh, and I'll try to talk about the. This is my outline of the talk. I'll give a brief introduction about the NPTEL online in, NPTEL uh, online certification process that starts from enrollment to the certification completion, courses that we offer, the timelines, how NPTEL courses can be useful for all stakeholders, whether so they are students, the faculty members, employed professional, professionals, how each one can be beneficial, get benefit out of it. <clears throat> Domain certification program that we have initiated, the internship opportunities that NPTEL offers how NPTEL courses can be useful for the candidates aspiring to crack uh, gate examination, the credit transfer framework, how it has been framed by UGC and AICT, and how this can be implemented in the universities and autonomous colleges, the soft skill training and the faculty development program. In total, mostly I'll be covering on that. Uh, just to make it as a two-way interaction, I will also take the questions that are posted in the YouTube chat, uh, chat box. So periodically while uh, delivering the talk, I'll also take the questions from there so that it becomes uh, interactive to some extent. So NPTEL is nothing new. It was uh, started by seven older IITs like IIT Bombay, Delhi, Guwahati, Kanpur, Karakpur, IIT Madras, IIT Ruki, and IISC Bangalore. Seven older IITs and IISC Bangalore uh, with a vision that the classroom recordings of the IIT faculties, what they're teaching to their students in IIT system, that will be recorded and made available with a vision that the quality of education can be improved to some extent. So that the interested learner groups who could not make it to the IIT should be able to access the contents and update themselves. So during 2003 to 2014, we, our focus was primarily to develop the courses. Uh, recording the contents from the lectures and make it available. That was the primary mode. We also had some courses developed in the form of a PDF document. That was web courses. 2014 onwards, we have changed our policy or the way we used to operate pre-2014, we have changed it from 2014. <clears throat> because if you see uh, globally, there was a trend that many universities, global top-notch universities, were coming together and started offering MOOCs courses, massive open online courses. IITs also took the steps in that direction. And 2014, we started offering 
uh, online certification courses in line with the global trend in association with NASCOM. <clears throat> so although we are coming from IITs, uh, which are primarily, uh, you can say, has got the strongest point on engineering and uh, technology front, but we are also not restricting our courses within this particular domain. We are offering courses from basic sciences, humanities, management, law, and all of the disciplines. We are, since 2014, as we are offering online certification courses, so uh, like the today's program, we are also taking initiative to raise the awareness about this program to the interested learner group, reaching out to the students group, teachers group, and all others through different workshops, and interacting with the stakeholders like the university and you can say the autonomous college administrations, so that these courses can be taken into the credit framework of the university system. <clears throat> now, although it started with seven plus one institute uh, in the beginning, it's no more restricted within those seven, eight institutions. It is now we have actually increased our ambit. We are now incorporated or at least 20 another institutions are already in our fold, both from India and abroad. Uh, who are offering, the faculty members from, they are also offering courses under the NPTEL program. During 2003 to 2021, our journey has been very long. During this period, we have created more than 2,300 unique courses covering all those disciplines that we talked about. These courses are available uh, to the interested uh, learner groups through our YouTube channel of NPTEL HRD, as well as nptel.sc.in portal. And to facilitate the learners from the tier two, tier three colleges or someone <clears throat> who might have not studied in English medium schools, to help them uh, follow the lectures delivered in English, we also provide English subtitles, English text transcription, uh, so that it becomes easy for the students to follow the lectures. Now from 2016, what started as pilot phase in 2014, uh, from NPTEL uh, in the form of online certification program. This was scaled to a larger umbrella body called Swayam in 2016 by Dadin Ministry of Human Resource Development. So Swayam was created. Swayam is an acronym which stands for Study Waves of Active Learning for the Young Aspiring Minds. A, an umbrella body was created under which a number of national coordinators were identified who will be offering online certification courses, meeting the aspiration of different segment of learners. It could be school children, it could be college goers, or it could be people from the industry or in the higher education sector. And not only from the, it's, it's from school means, it will have a school oriented curriculum. It could be art science college courses. It could be engineering, law management, so there are a lot of diversities in the terms of level and the disciplines. So one coordinator cannot take care of the requirement of complete spectrum of learners. So that is the reason eight coordinators were created and NPTEL is one of them. NPTEL is primarily mandated to uh, say offer online certification courses for UG and PG level engineering curriculum course, engineering students. However, since each IIT has got their basic science disciplines, uh, departments, management programs, law, laws are also taught in some of the IITs. So we are also offering courses from humanities, social science, basic sciences, management, and law courses, particularly in the IP law and such. So although we are from engineering background, but we are offering a complete spectrum of courses. And if you see the number of courses that are coming from humanity, social science or management, they are almost at par with top engineering discipline courses like computer science. Our courses are no way uh, very different from the what is taught by uh, a faculty member or a student gets uh, taught in a regular brick and mortar uh, university system. They're exactly identical. But since these courses are offered in a MOOCs format, where MOOC is an acronym, Massive Open Online Courses. Massive means the courses cannot be, uh, you cannot restrict the number of students or the learners who are attending the course within uh, the capacity of a weekend motor classroom, which can be maximum 
200, 300, 400, not more than that. Here, the number of students who are enrolling in the course can be hundred or hundreds of thousands. Okay, so the number of people who can enroll is in a course is massive. There's no restriction on that. These courses are open. That means the contents can be accessed by anyone who is interested online. Since these courses are open for the mass massive audience where the audience is not limited within a particular city or particular college, it is spread across the length and breadth of the country and has got a footprint across the globe. So how do they access the contents? The contents are delivered in an online mode. That is third alphabet O is online. Delivery takes place over internet. And last is C, that is courses. These courses are in no way different from the regular structure because it too has got a fixed syllabus. Every week there are certain fixed amount of lectures delivered. There is a continuous assessment process. Lecture materials are given. At the end, there is a final certification exam. So it is almost identical to that of regular structure. The only difference is that faculty is not physically available in front of the students in a face-to-face -face interaction mode. So he or she is delivering the content in a recorded format. That's the only difference. So the NPTEL MOOCs actually follow the SWAM guidelines, offering the courses in a four quadrant approach. The first quadrant is if I start recording the lecture delivered by the faculty in a classroom, make it available to the students as it is done in a flipped classroom structure, that becomes the first quadrant. That is the recording of the faculty delivering the talk. Okay. Then what happens in the classroom during the delivery of the uh, lecture, the faculty will be interacting with the students or sometimes the students will be interrupting the teacher and asking the questions. So since the contents are delivered here in online mode, the faculty is not available, but the interaction definitely takes place, but that takes place over online mode through some sort of a blog mechanism where the learners can post their queries, which will be answered by the faculty. So instead of face-to-face -face interaction, that takes place through online mode. Third is what? The teacher may be interested to share some handwritten notes or maybe PowerPoint slides, maybe uh, this any such, uh, say, links to free wiki resources. These are the additional reading materials. So supplementary study materials can also be provided and that is provided here also. Okay. Fourth one is every week after the lectures are given, the faculty will give a set of questions so that the teacher can, the students can actually assess them, themselves to what extent they have followed the lectures of them. So every week there will be a set of questions related to that week's content. The student will be given certain timeline during which they will solve the problem and submit for evaluation. So every assignment will be evaluated and the score will reflect the understanding level of the students. So these are the four quadrants we'll follow in SOAM structure. In addition to that, we do follow that periodically, we allow the teacher to interact with the students in a virtual mode, in a live way, the way we are talking today. And there are many people who are attending this program to YouTube. So here also in such cases also in NPTEL courses, Every month, at least once after three or four weeks of lecture has been completed, the faculty will be connected to the students through YouTube live sessions, where the faculty can take the questions directly posted by the students <coughs> and answer them. So although the SWAM says four quadrant approach, we actually incorporated one more quadrant to make it more useful for the learner communities. So during, uh, what are the formats? What are the type of courses that we offer? We offer three variants of the courses in the form of, or uh, uh, separated in the form of duration. If it is a full semester course, we try to complete the course within 30 hours duration. <clears throat> you may definitely argue, you are actually covering a full semester course, maybe within 40, 45, 50 hours. But here, these 30 hours is absolutely condensed. Here, once that faculty starts talking, there is no gap in between. 
Even if there is some pause, the faculty might have taken a sip of water, there was coughing, sneezing and all. We try to remove all those things so that the condensed 30 hours lecture is available to you, which is almost equivalent to regular 40 hours classroom lecture. Okay. 20 hour courses are also there, which are of medium type, a little less than, maybe a little less than the regular, uh, you can say, uh, core or elective course syllabus. And there are some courses of 10 hours duration, which are typically targeting on a special topic, discussion on a particular topic. So this, these are the three variations of courses. And in a regular university system, the teacher will be actually interacting or delivering a talk maybe for two hours, three hours, or four hours every week. We do follow the same structure. In some cases, we say lecture, tutorial, practical, LTP structure. Okay. So here, our structure is 2.5 hours of lecture, 2.5 to 3 hours of lecture. Our lectures are delivered every week. Taking 2.5 hours as the best uh, part we contain, we will be able to complete a full semester 30 hour course within a 12 weeks timeline. It will take us eight weeks time to complete our 20 hour course. And it takes four weeks time to complete a special topic related course of 10 hours duration. In addition to that, as we said, there are four quadrants. There will be forum for interaction. Supplementary study materials will be made available and there will be one assignment per week. At the end, additional interaction in the through the uh, YouTube uh, chat, YouTube live session, that is optional video-based interaction with the faculty once in a month. And at the end, there is an optional certification examination. Now, who can do these courses? If these courses we offer in a triple A model, that is anytime, anyone from anywhere. That is irrespective of his or her age group, academic background, anyone can join any of the courses offered in Swayam. Only requirement is the interest to learn a particular subject and the internet connectivity. That is what is required. And if someone is interested to complete the course, first point till the optional video-based interaction with the faculty is absolutely free. I can join in any course, Complete the first five, uh, one, five uh, points without paying even a single penny. That is, it's fully subsidized by the Ministry of Education. Only thing, if I am interested for the certification exam, then only the process of fee payment comes. That we'll talk a little later. So lecture videos means there will be about 2.5 hours of lectures per week. How do you separate? In your case, you might be delivering your lecture duration could be 55 minutes to one hour. But in our case, lectures are usually of 30 minutes duration. That helps the students to keep their motivation uh, for 30 minutes because the attention span is very low. So even if it goes to one hour, two hours, students find it difficult to follow. That's the standard practice. So 30 minutes is our standard duration. And we try to provide five lectures every week uh, covering the syllabus of that week. They, these lectures are released on every Monday morning. So if the course is starting from say date X, that week, that is the Monday, the weekly lectures, videos, the weekly assignments, everything will be released on Monday morning. However, there are few courses. Suppose we are offering 600 courses in a semester. Not all courses were created recently. Many of the courses were created earlier. So these courses are being offered this semester in a rerun mode. These videos are already available in the NPTEL and YouTube. So you can, if someone is interested for those courses, they can get directly get the contents uh, from the NPTEL or YouTube before going ahead with the course. However, if the course is new, newly created for that semester, then they will have to wait till the courses are released on Monday morning. Supplementary study materials, it can be text transcript of the lecture that we talked a little later, a little earlier. PowerPoint presentation slides are usually made available so that the students have a chance to go for rapid revision. Sometimes the faculty may be interested to share some handwritten notes, uh, links to free uh, web learning resources and such. 
we are also providing english subtitles of the lectures for some of the courses which are created uh, maybe earlier okay because it takes time to create all these facilities assessment quizzes every week as i said that there will be a set of questions given for testing the understanding of the subject of that particular week okay so every week there is one assignment how many questions do they ask it's about 10 to 20 questions or 10 to 15 questions per week every monday the assignment will be released submission timeline is 10 days that is monday till next week's wednesday 11:39 uh 1159 hours is the timeline during which one will be able to submit the assignment for assessment the assignment questions could be something which can be automatically graded by the computer or it can be manual grading type where the teacher will be giving some problem where you have to someone has to solve it in a piece of paper scan the document and upload it for verification or assessment so it could be either way we permit multiple submission within the 10 days timeline the students will be able to submit the assignment as many times as they feel like only the last submission will be taken into final consideration for gradation okay evaluation after the assignment submission deadline expires the portal will show which are the correct options and whether the person has actually selected the correct option and got the marks and also the portal will show the score there we'll talk uh, about it little later also so assignment detailed worked out solution created by the faculty will also be released after the assignment submission deadline expires so that if a student has not received 100 marks this each assignment is graded out of 100 if he or she has uh, lost some marks made some mistakes they can actually find out where they went wrong okay discussion forum in a classroom this takes place through a face to face interaction but here the faculty is not available physically in a classroom so they are connected to virtual mode so to help that what we do there is a discussion forum where all learners who are connected to this program who have enrolled in these courses are having access to a forum where they can post their queries related to the course these courses these questions will be seen and answered by the faculty associated with the course and the teaching assistants okay who are usually masters or doctoral students this will be managed by the course faculty and teaching assistants and <clears throat> the forum remains open from the date when you open the courses for enrollment till the results are declared say for january session we have opened the enrollment process in november and the certification exam will be completed by say april last week and the results will be all results will be cleared by say may end so during november till may end the complete period will be open for discussion uh, open for discussion with the interacting with the teacher assignment questions could be one correct option type of multiple choice question that is few options are given only one correct option is given there it could be multiple select that is more than one correct options are embedded within the options that are given so in case of multiple choice if you select the correct option you get full marks in case you are facing uh, you, have, you feel that there are more than one correct options that is a uh, question is a multiple select type in that case be cautious as long as you select correct option you get marks in case you select any incorrect option along with one or more correct options the score reduces to zero so as long as you will be selecting the correct option you will get proportionate marks okay that's how the only if you select any incorrect option score reduces to zero that means there is some negative marking component only in case of msq it could the questions could be something like a numerical problem you have to solve the problem put the numerical answer there something a word string may be asked to be put in some filling the blanks so there could be short answer question where alpha numeric or numeric values are to be inserted for evaluation and there could be subjective assignment also where the student will be given a set of questions they'll solve the solve it in a piece of paper 
scan the document and upload it as i said little earlier okay what are the type of courses do we offer we offer the courses covering core courses from the engineering basic science management curriculum we also offer elective courses courses from the emerging areas industry scenario that we'll see little later also they are changing very fast so there are the new technologies coming up we try to provide courses which are job oriented and are from the emerging areas soft skill are soft skills are extremely important is almost as important as the domain knowledge or your subject knowledge as far as getting job opportunities are concerned so we do offer courses from the soft skill entrepreneurship ip law teaching and assistance uh, assessment process for the faculty members we offer courses from all these areas the detailed list can be seen in the portal timelines if you talk about during we offer the courses aligning with the uh, timelines of your university system that is during january to june or july to december these are the timelines that we follow we try to uh, say we usually offer the courses our courses starts either in third week of january or usually starts in third week of july there is a standard policy okay so we have got three set of courses four weeks eight weeks and 12 weeks we split the four weeks and eight week courses into two segment first set of four weeks first set of eight weeks and 12 week courses are offered from january in the first lot say for january to april 2022 session the first set of four weeks first set of eight weeks and all 12 week courses will be offered uh, for your uh, will, are being offered from 23rd of january the courses will start the enrollment process which started in november will close one week behind the schedule that is 24 january is course starting date by 31st january 5 pm will close the enrollment process now the four week courses will be completed within a month's time that is in february eight week course will be completed within two week two months time that is in march the examination for this two set of courses will be conducted on 27th of march 2022 for which examination form is also open and this will be closed by 14th of february for normal fee structure and with late fee people will be able to register by 18th of february okay now we have got another set of four weeks and another set of eight weeks we understand that many of the universities may be starting their academic semester little later to help the students of those colleges we try to delay the starting point of this by one month so our second set of four weeks and second set of eight weeks courses will start on 21st february 2022 and these courses will be completed in march on april along with 12 week courses so these three set of courses will be having an exam in april on two days 23rd and 24th examination registration form is open examination registration can be done within normal by paying the normal fee within 14th of march and with late fee it can be up to 18th of march how many courses we are offering during this period taking the complete four weeks eight weeks and 12 weeks we have got 592 courses on offer from nptel out of that 502 courses are being offered during the first phase whose courses are starting from 24th of january where do you get your course list you can actually see here i'll show you uh, you can see here tentative course list january to april 2022 you'll be able to see the timelines the courses 592 courses which are currently available the discipline what is the course name faculty affiliation of the faculty whether it's a new course or rerun course start date end date period every data is there so you can actually refer to this document uh, for selecting the courses okay next we have seen okay these are the four quadrant it follows we have seen okay these are the timelines this is the course list now i want to enroll into any course i have identified the course how do i join what are the 
modes available for me to join the courses. It could be directly if I have got access to a laptop, desktop, uh, similar devices. I can go to the URL swam.gov.in slash NPTL. I'll just go to the portal and possibly show you from there. You can go to swam.gov.in. It will take you to this page where you have got all coordinators uh, logo displayed here. You can click onto the all courses. It will display the list of courses that are currently available for enrollment from all NPT, all coordinators, whether it is a CEC, UGC, NIUS, IGNO, IAM Bangalore, AICT, NITTR, all courses are currently that are available currently for enrollment. They're made uh, listed here. You can see the courses from NPTL, CEC, NITTR, NCERT, all these courses. Now, if you are looking for a course from NPTL, you can put a filter here, select NPTL. Only NPTL courses will be listed. Now you can also put the discipline wise list. You can select here, okay, I am looking for engineering technology related course that will be reflected here. If you feel that, okay, I want to do only 10 hours, uh, sorry, 12 weeks, eight weeks or four weeks types of courses, you want to put a filter, you can filter it in the form of four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks courses. If I select 12 weeks, only 12 week courses from engineering and technology discipline. And also I can select the subcategories. Okay, will be available or will be shown here. In this course card, what is shown here, advanced composites, these are the topics has been shown. Topic name, faculty name, which institute is offering, whether this course is from NPTL or not, start date, exam date, enrollment ending date, only this much information is available here. Now, suppose I want to actually uh, enroll into any of these courses. Okay, I have identified, I'll be looking for this course. I introduction to programming through C++. I'm interested for this course, okay? I click onto this course. What will happen? It will take me to the course enrollment, uh, course page, where little detail about the course will be shown. Here you can see currently, uh, 27,127 people have already enrolled. The course summary is given. It is a core course of 12 weeks starting on 24 January. All the other discipline, credit points, undergraduate level course, it is shown. There is an introductory video recorded by the faculty to say what he or she is going to teach within this course. It is also put in a textual format so that the learning outcome is known. After 12 weeks, what you are expected to learn. Then who are the intended audience? If there is any prerequisite knowledge required to follow this course, not for joining the course, but for following the course. Industry support. By What do you mean by industry support? It only says that which are the industries that will appreciate this domain, this particular course knowledge. Here it says basic programming is of value to, to all. <coughs> C++ allows you to design very fast programs. And so it's a generic course at the undergraduate level. But you'll find many of the courses which might be useful for the DRDO, ISHRO, railways. So it will be written there. So if you are looking for a career opportunity in those areas, maybe it's good to see the course uh, industry support data here. Then you have got course layout, clearly written week-wise structure, the books and references that the faculty has suggested, faculty biographer, biography, course certificate, how, what are the certification criteria? Every data is mentioned here. Once you have understood that, okay, this is the course I am looking for, you can click onto the join button. It will take you to the course enrollment page. Here, you can enroll into the course using many of the avenues. Suppose I want to, I have got a Gmail account. We suggest that if you have a Gmail account, always use your Gmail account only for enrollment. In this case, I have a Gmail account. I am using, trying to use the Gmail account for enrolling into the uh, referred course. Just a minute, it's taking me to the enrollment page. What it is showing? <coughs> it is showing my name, mobile number, email ID. It is showing age group. I can select from the drop down menu, country. I can select from the drop down menu. It is not the students from India are only taking these courses. In the later part of our talk, we'll see there are many learners who are enrolling for these courses from abroad also. And we are conducting the exam also in some part of the country, some part of the globe. Uh, 
10 PTL exams are conducted. Okay. Profession, there are four professions listed under the drop down. One is the student, faculty, employed, and other. If you select student or faculty, that means you are certainly associated with some academic institution. So there is a pertinent question, part of a SOAM local chapter, select yes or no as appropriate. Say for the students of the Ikpa University or Sri Shivaji College, the definitely they are local chapters, so they can select, their students can actually select yes here, then select the state as applicable, whether it's Rajasthan or Maharashtra, then select the name of the college from the drop down menu. Okay, that's that's how you do. And once you follow these steps, this data is available to the college SPOC that okay, the student X, Y, Z from such and such college has actually, from their college has actually enrolled in certain courses. They'll get access to that information. Then year of graduation. You can select whether you have graduated. If it is so, select the year. Otherwise, you can indicate when you are going to graduate. List is given 20, 2025, 2026, 2027. You can select from there. <clears throat> then college roll number, you can indicate. Degree that you are currently pursuing. Department you are associated with. Department, we have actually restricted it to maybe 10, 15 departments only. If there are uh, diversified, uh, say, departments, number of departments are there, uh, newer departments in many institutions. And it's not possible to include everything here. So what we say is that <clears throat> if you do not find the department or discipline that you are currently pursuing, if you do not find it there in the list, select the department that closely resembles to your department. Select that one. It's, it will not be reflected in your certificate. This is only for our statistical information. Okay, study year, whether you are studying in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, as the case may be, you select from the drop down and uh, put it there. Then you select, I agree to the SOAM terms and service and I agree to follow the honor code. Then join the courses. Once you click onto the join the course, it will take, it will give you a message like, okay, welcome to the course. It will give you a message that I have successfully enrolled into the course. The message will be delivered in my mailbox as well as the screen will show that I have already enrolled into the course. This is the screen it is showing that, okay, I have enrolled into the course. Now we are actually going to start our courses. This is a 12 week course starting from January. So in the course page, what do we see? This is the course page. It was having a week zero. Week zero means it was giving some glimpse about what type of background knowledge may be required to understand the contents. If there was some mathematical background required, this week one, week zero assignment have given that idea, like these are the basic knowledges you should have to understand the particular lecture. So this was not for assessment, but just to give you some idea like what you are expecting in the coming days. Now, since this uh, learning through MOOCs format is very new. It's not very, uh, say, it's unconventional one. Now things have become very common just because of the pandemic, we are in all, everyone is in an online mode, but otherwise uh, it was not so. So just to facilitate the students to familiarize with, with the online teaching process in MOOCs platform like Swayam, what we do, we provide the week one lectures at least seven to 10 days or maybe 15 days in advance so that the students can familiarize themselves with the portal. So here you have got week one, there are a number of lectures, lecture one in parts they have given, week one assignment is given. Say lecture, if I click onto the lecture, what will happen? The lecture will be shown here. I can play the lecture here. Once it plays here, I'll be able to see the lecture here. Also, if I want to see the lecture in YouTube, I can click on this YouTube tab and the same lecture will be opened in the YouTube that you can see. Okay, now comes, after I go through the lectures, I can go to the ask a questions. Now here 27,000 people have already enrolled. So <clears throat> there could be some query related to the courses. So these students have already started posting their queries. 
you as a student of the course you can also post your queries here okay you can post your queries or you can also see okay if the any other peer group student has posted any query how the teacher has responded to that so you will have access to all queries that have been raised by you as well as the peer groups from any other part of the country or globe okay once you get your queries answered then you go back to you see if there is any uh, say supplementary study material that also will be linked here <coughs> then you will have the quiz now here you have got what is blank a there is some statement here you can see some questions have been given so here you will have to use short is there are short answer type questions you have to answer in alpha numeric or numeric values okay what there are some options given here you select the correct options now we say that every assignment is graded out of 100 and submission timeline is 10 days okay where it is written what is the submission timeline due date is given here you can see here it is 9th february is the given deadline 2359 it will close during this period i can go and submit the assignment okay <clears throat> after first submission if i detect i have made a mistake i can resubmit it within the timeline okay this is what after the submission deadline expires all these answers will be shown here whether this was yes or no correct option it will be shown in green color and it will also mention whether you have marked it correctly and got the score how do you calculate the score you will see that okay there are marks written here in the form of points calculate the total points here if there are 15 questions each one of one point that means total cumulative point is 15 and the 15 corresponds 15 point corresponds to 100 marks so you can find out what is one point if you select this option correctly how much marks you are expecting okay this is how things are done and once the assignment submission deadline expires you can go to the progress tab and see your progress your score here <clears throat> assignment 1 programming assignment there are two programming assignments given so what is your score in each of this okay as we said that okay for a normal course maybe it's good to have multiple choice or multiple select type of questions or having alpha numeric problems but for a programming course the teacher might be interested to see that to what extent you have understood the programming they will give you programming assignment as it is shown here they given some programming assignments which you have to solve it within a deadline and submit it okay <clears throat> so this we have covered if you do not have access to laptop or desktop but every one of us has got mobile devices if you have got even have got android or ios then you can download the swayam app from the google play store <clears throat> and use that one for continuing in the course you will be able to do most of the works that you do in the portal okay these all things we have shown you here now every week we are saying we are giving you an assignment if it is a 12 week course there are 12 assignments each of 100 marks so there are 1200 marks are at stake for a 8 weeks course eight assignments four weeks course four assignment how do you calculate the marks and take this part link it into the final certification in your regular university also you have got some internal assessment the same thing goes here also 25% of your final certification comes from the assess assignment marks that is if there are 12 assignments you are getting whatever marks you are getting a part of that will be reflected in the certificate but we understand you are not attending the course as a full time student of this program so you are doing this course in addition to what you are pursuing in your regular academic programs <clears throat> colleges and universities so there could be instances when you are not in a position to submit all assignments so for a 12 weeks course what we do taking all these exigencies we try to restrict ourselves to only eight assignments for evaluation if any if you have submitted 12 assignments 
we only put them into uh, say excel sheet and see which are the assignments that you have earned maximum score <clears throat> best eight assignments scores will be taken together added the total marks out of 100 compute what is your average score out of 100 and 25% of that will be taken for certification and it will be reflected <clears throat> so 25% score will be calculated from your assignment scores and 75% remaining value will come from your final proctored certification exam that you will be writing at the end of the course okay so 75% weightage goes for the final certification and 25% goes for the uh, assignment marks, weekly assignments. Now there could be some issues like, okay, in a course, say you have admitted in a eight, 12 weeks course, you have only submitted say six assignments. You could not submit even eight, which we will be taking into account. Then there could be a question like, okay, are you permitted to write the exam? We say, yes, you can be permitted provided you fulfill the criteria. What is that criteria? We say that for each component, whether final exam or assignment, you should have at least 40% marks. That is, once we calculate the 25% marks from your assignment, you should have at least 10 marks out of that. 10 marks out of 25 should be there. Then only if you write the exam and do well there, you will get certificate. If you get less than 10, in the submitted assignments, the average score 25% of that. If you get less than 10, then even if you write the exam, you will not be given a certificate. Even if, if you score 100 out of 100 in the final certification. Now for programming courses, there are some components like you will be assessed not only on MCQ, MSQ front, but also on the programming front. How do you assess it? Just before the examination, <clears throat> you will be given a particular date, say maybe two or three spread, two or three days <clears throat> prior to your exam date, we'll identify two time slots, one during the day, one during the night. When at a designated time, you'll go to the portal and see there is a special assignment released for that. Do solve those problems and submit it. You can as attend the morning session or night session, or you can also attend both the session. <clears throat> if you are attending both the session, then only the score where you have got the highest score that will be taken. Highest score out of 100 will be taken for calculation of 25% weightage in the certification. So for programming courses, you will have three components. Normal assignment will carry 25% weightage, proctors, Programming, non proctored programming exam will carry 25% weightage, and the remaining 50% weightage will be reflected in the final certification. Okay, so in all cases, you should score at least 40% marks. <clears throat> what is the examination fee? As I said, if you want to complete the course without examination, you don't pay anything. But if you want to get a certificate from IITs or NPTEL, then you have to register separately for by paying the requisite fee in the portal. Examination fee is 1000 rupees per subject, irrespective of whether it is four weeks, eight weeks, or 12 weeks course, irrespective of that. 50% fee waiver is available upfront for the SCST and physically challenged candidates with more than 40% disability. How do the students pay the fee? They can pay the fee online using any of the online uh, payment method that are available currently. Also, if there are more number of students willing to write the uh, certification exam, <clears throat> in some cases, the college also collect the fees in bulk and transfer it to NPTEL uh, through NEFT or demand drop. We, since we are working with the industry partners to understand their needs and offering the courses so that the students after doing this course uh, the industry finds the students useful. Okay, since we are targeting the requirement of the industry, we do get some support from the industry in the form of their CSR activities, corporate social responsibility activities. 
So whatever the fund we get from under this program, CSR funding, we try to utilize it to support the needy students. Suppose there are few students in your college who are meritorious, but really are economically weak and cannot afford to pay thousand rupees. <clears throat> the college is, uh, a college can actually recommend the names of such students to NPTEL for consideration of 50% fee waiver. If NPTEL has got the fund, adequate fund to support that, we'll approve it beforehand. In that case, the student will register by paying thousand rupees fee only, but the 50% fee will be refunded back to the students provided the student <coughs> has qualified to get the certificate. That means the student has to successfully complete the course. Also, if a student is actually appearing for more than one courses, then we will not be able to accommodate uh, say few ever for more than one courses for a particular student in a semester. Only few ever will be given for one course. <clears throat> Final exam, I can take the course from the comfort of my home, that's fine. But for writing the exam, I will have to actually go back to the examination center and with your uh, photo identity card issued by the government agencies like Aadhaar card, PAN card, voter card, even school, uh, college, all ticket, uh, college admit card and all, which has a valid dates stamped on that. I can go there and write the examination. Okay, so it is center based. Centers are spread across more than 200 cities across the country. We try to provide the exam centers close to your uh, place. Actually, you will be selecting the options. Once you are going for registration, you will see the options available before you in front of you, uh, near to your uh, place of residence or near to your college. So you'll be selecting three options, A, B, C. We'll try to first accommodate you within A. If it is not feasible, we'll go to B or C as the case may be. <clears throat> Exams are conducted on two shifts on a particular day, morning shift between nine to 12 and afternoon between two to five. Okay, you can write for two exams on a particular day, one in the forenoon, another in the afternoon. For this, it is essential that you have enrolled into these courses using the same email ID. We actually identify the students only through their email ID. So if you have used a single ID, unique email ID for enrolling into the courses, then only you can expect that if you are, say, registering for more than one courses, for which maybe uh, there are two exams on a particular day, you can expect same exam center. Okay. In cases you will find, uh, maybe you'll be curious to know that, okay, you are writing the paper X in the phone -in session and your student, your, your friend might be writing the same paper in the afternoon session. This you may notice. We conduct the exam on both the sessions using two different sets of question paper. So sometimes it may so happen that you'll be writing the course on a the forenoon session, your friend will be writing the same paper in the afternoon, but be clear in your mind, they are on a different sets of paper of equal toughness level. Certification grading is five point grading, less than 40 is a cumulative total, 25% from assignment, 25% from the programming score or 50% from the final exam or 75% from final exam as the case may be. The cumulative total, if it is less than 40, you are not successful and we don't provide you even as uh, you can say um, participation certification also. <clears throat> 40 onwards, we say you are successful and eligible to get a certificate. 40 to 59, it is called successfully completed. 60 to 100, we put elite tag on the certificate. 60 to 74, 74 only elite word will be written. 70 to 89, in addition to this elite tag, you will have also have silver tag here. And between 90 to 100 consolidated score, you will have elite and gold tag in the certificate. The soft copy of the certificates will be released as soon as the results are declared. <clears throat> Certificate special feature, in addition to what you see that elite, elite gold, elite silver, successfully completed. If your score is very high, and if you are within top 1% or 2% or 5% of the successful candidates, where the course, the number of successful candidates are more than 100, 
then in that case the certificate will also carry topper seal that is 1% 2% or 5% these topper seal the students who are getting topper seal okay because of their high score their names photographs will be reflected in the nptel portal as well as it will be reflected in the local chapter page of the college also and these features the top score are will fetch you a lot of other benefits from the nptel we'll discuss in the coming slides <clears throat> so the each certificate will have a qr code so that you can verify the authenticity of the certificate from the uh, by scanning the qr code you don't have to approach anyone if you have a mobile uh, device just use the mobile qr code scanner over the certificate and you can see the original certificate from the nptel server itself we also mentioned that the credit equivalency of this particular course that is in general we say 10 hour course is equivalent to one credit 20 hour course is equivalent to eight credits i uh, sorry two credits and 30 hour course is equivalent to three credits however the universities are free to provide higher credits for a course considering it's not only uh, the video lecture seeing and as doing assignments there are many other activities like asking into the forum um, you can see the sub reading the supplementary study materials and all so colleges are given some flexibility that they can add additional credit points not colleges i would say universities like dean university full universities or even the autonomous colleges has got the flexibility to add additional credit points over and above what is recommended by nptel and most of the universities that have adopted these courses have actually made three credits as equal to four or five credits or sometimes two credit courses into three credits or four credits okay this is the sample certificate it will have the photograph of the students student name course name assignment score final exam score how many students have actually have been successful in this course when it was offered your roll number topper seal elite gold depending on your performance in the course back side will carry the grading scheme qr code so that anyone can verify the authenticity of the certificate without approaching the nptel authorities now you are getting a certificate what we have shown here these certificates on completion of a course suppose you have done multiple number of courses many courses in that case and you want to show it to the prospective employer that okay see you have done these all courses in a single format what you can do we provide you uh, to generate a consolidated mark sheet in this you will be able to generate the soft copy of the certificate <coughs> if you have done multiple courses where it's a you can say the single transcript that you get after the end of semester from the university that is similar thing the courses that you have done your performance in the assignment final exam total marks your uh, whether you have passed or not and the performance elite silver elite silver elite all these things will be reflected it will carry your photograph and the qr code also now at this point i'll just address some of the questions that are generally faced how many courses can i enroll as we said that we are offering about 592 courses from nptel during january to april you can enroll in n number of courses if you have the capability you can join into 100 of courses no issues in that <clears throat> depending on your capability there is no limit to how many courses you can enroll there is no age bar anyone irrespective of his or her academic background age gender they can join into the course number is not limited then some people ask that my college is not a local chapter can i join to the course our answer is yes this permits anyone whether you are a homemaker you are a retired professional self employed employed in government sector private sector anywhere or in academics anyone can join the course irrespective of whether their college or organization <clears throat> is associated as a local chapter or not in in case they are not local chapter they can say yes or no accordingly and if they still want to say that okay i am from a college but my college is not a local chapter in that case <clears throat> they can select no that their college is not a local chapter then go to the drop down menu after the list of 
all local chapter colleges from the particular state is over there is an other button they can write the name of their college if that is so okay then someone also asked like i am studying say uh, chemical engineering can i take a course from computer science or maybe can i take a course from humanities yes this is a wonderful platform where you are permitted to learn the things from other disciplines that is you can take irrespective of your parent discipline you can learn the courses or take the courses from other disciplines and get certification in the age of industry 4.0 or fourth industrial revolution there is a demand that irrespective of which branch of engineering or management you are doing we all are actually influenced by different exponential technologies so until and unless we have a fair idea about all those emerging technologies it may be difficult for us to sustain in the industry or in academics so this permits us to join any course of our choice irrespective of which branch of engineering or art science whatever we are studying <coughs> how many course certification exam i can write in a semester as we said that in a semester you will have exam once in march and twice in april or once in september twice in october so there are three days available six exam slots forenoon afternoon included so in a semester you can take 100 of courses for learning but if you want to go for the certification maximum you can write certification for six courses <clears throat> provided you select the courses in such a way more than two courses does not have same exam date okay this i have answered <clears throat> you have not submitted adequate number of assignments in a particular format of course then are you eligible to get the certificate we say that calculate the average score take 25% of that if your average score after 25% you get that you are getting at least 10 marks out of 25 then only you become eligible to get the certificate okay some people they generally ask in the forum like okay i have submitted all the assignments but i have not appeared for the certification exam this time suppose next time next semester or the next year the same course is offered in a iran mode <clears throat> if i join for that course will my present assignment scores will be carried forward our answer is no these assignment scores are specific for this semester so if you have not submitted or if you are not writing the exam this semester but willing to do the certification next semester you will have to start a fresh from all man submit all the assignments there <clears throat> will i get same examination center if i wish to write exam for more than one course in a particular exam day i discussed it elaborately that if you have used same email id while enrolling and registration then we will consider you are the same person and we will try to provide you the same exam center now in the next part this is what our journey is starting from enrollment to the certification now why one should do the certification course since childhood we have been taught that okay you should always ask why should i so now you ask yourself why should you do you are doing uh, a regular curriculum either in uh, ikfai university or shivaji uh, sri shivaji college or any other college you are mandated to do certain credits to earn your ba bsc bcom btech mba or any such programs <coughs> certificate there but then what is the necessity of doing additional courses here see i personally feel that after your graduation after you leave your college you will be taking may either of these three paths some people will be looking for jobs some people might be looking for higher studies options and some people who has got some ideas good ideas which can be implemented uh, in a business model they would like to use the opportunity to start their entrepreneurship so there are three could be they, these three could be tentative options <clears throat> how nptel can actually fit into all these domains see the report from the 
uh, World Economic Forum, the future of jobs report. <clears throat> it says that because of the implementation of the technology or automation taking place in all industries, the requirement of manpower is changing very rapidly. The manpower intensive jobs are diminishing and newer types of jobs are increasing or created on an everyday basis. The knowledge that you gather today, earlier the half-life of that knowledge used to be 30 years, but now it has reduced to a mere five years. So after five years, there is a need to reskill or upskill ourselves. It is anticipated or it's projected that more than 1 billion people will be required to be uh, upskilled or reskilled by 2030. And see the bottom, uh, that left-hand side picture. Because of the automation, uh, the, uh, the automation rate has increased from 33% to 47% or anticipated to increase to by 14% within five years time span, resulting in reduction of human labor by 14%. So there is an urgent necessity to reskill or upskill. This was a global report. But what is our Indian, Indian scenario? <clears throat> our own organizations like FIKI, Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, NASCOM, that represents the IT sector primarily, and Ernest and Young, they carried out a survey in 2017, and the report suggests that there will be substantial changes in the employment scenario. By 2022, they anticipated within the five years tenure, there will be severe impact on the use of technology or industry 4.0, <clears throat> primarily very high in IT sectors, business financial sectors, uh, your uh, insurance sectors, medium uh, impact will be felt in automobile and retail and maybe a little lower in apparel and leather industries. In terms of numbers, they said that 9% of the workforce will be deployed in new jobs that did not exist today. That was the prediction in 2017. And they also predicted that the 37% of the jobs will have radically changed skill set requirement. And 54% job will maintain status quo, something like that. Okay. So under these circumstances, if you are in, say, first year today, what steps you are going to take so that by the time you graduate, you have adequate expertise or exposure on the emerging areas that are coming or anticipated to come uh, maybe within the next five years. Okay, maybe your syllabuses will not be updated on that regular front. It may take almost a decade time, 10 years time to change the syllabuses, but industry is changing very rapidly. So there is an urgent need to look into this and see, explore. In addition to what is available to you through your curriculum, can you take any other path to learn the newer things? What was the reason for such rapid changes? We have seen there are industrial revolutions have come and changed the way we work. First revolution came <clears throat> way back in 1765 when the steam engines were incorporated. Second revolution came with the use of electricity and oil-based power. We had the concept of mass production. Then we had automated production line with the help of incorporation of electronics and information technology. And currently we are in the era of industry 4.0 or fourth industrial revolution. We hear the terms, whether we are from art science college or engineering college or management college, we hear these terminologies like internet of things, Artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, cloud computing, um, you say natural language processing, cyber physical systems, and so on, robotics, drones. These are the things that are shaping our day to day life now. See some of the pictures. Today's, if you see that today's, uh, uh, say, uh, floor, shop floor in an automobile industry, <clears throat> most of the jobs which used to be done by Human intervention, maybe a 10, 15 years back, has now been completely taken over by the robots. Hardly there is any human intervention. Robots have been used even in India, in you can say in the COVID period, in hospitals to supply the foodstuffs and essential medicine to the COVID-affected people. 
we are seeing now even the drones are being used for transporting the covid vaccines from one place to another place and very recently amazon or flipkart i think i don't remember the name <coughs> they have planned the operation of transporting the ordered stores to the doorstep of the users using the drones so even in the logistics supply chain also drones are going to play a very vital role 3d printing is being extensively used it's not for prototyping being extensively used now we hear the terms like smart factories smart sensors where you have got a lot of sensor networks working having the cloud computing infrastructure and all so until and unless you have adequate exposure on those fronts maybe you will find it difficult or in a disadvantageous position <coughs> in the job front considering the emerging areas even ai city the regulator of engineering and management education in the country they have said that <coughs> frame the framework or frame the structure for minor degrees in the emerging areas like internet of things data science artificial intelligence and machine learning cyber security augmented reality virtual reality robotics blockchain because these are the need of the hour yes many of the colleges that follow ict structure they were not having this all uh, neither the faculty or uh, even the infrastructure to teach these subjects there could be cases so in if you are from that area maybe you can explore the opportunities provided by nptel where you get similar courses from iits <clears throat> this was one area where you can prepare yourself better for your job opportunities now suppose you are planning for cracking gate exam net exam or maybe uh, which is conducted any other exam jam examination conducted by iits <clears throat> the syllabus is that you cover as part of your regular curriculum may not be adequate to crack uh, such exam national level competitive exam and many of the students what they do they either get admitted to a coaching class or maybe they uh, explore a lot of books from the library resources you can also explore the video lectures provided under nptel because the core courses most of the core courses as part of these syllabuses gate jam net are covered in nptel in depth uh, discussion has been done by the faculty and you can export these courses for preparation of competitive examinations so even for the competitive exams gate can uh, nptel courses can be extremely beneficial you have a very good idea which you want to translate into a production model you want to become an entrepreneur then having just idea is not adequate to start the business you should have a very good communication skill you should convince your investor that okay why they should invest in your venture okay you should build up your team you should have that quality to build up the team and get maximum extracted from them the best possible that you can get since in the beginning also you will have uh, also you should have a proper planning how to get the funding and all project planning supply chain everything needs to be discussed or planned properly then in the beginning there could be failure it's quite natural so how do you actually recover from there so you should have courage and risk taking capability ability to learn from your mistakes and stand on your feet so many of these qualities will require a lot of nurturing many of the courses under nptel cover these aspects maybe the young body entrepreneurs can actually look for uh, some of these courses from nptel and prepare themselves for their future journey it is said that uh, we can say that when asked about the i'm just reading out from the uh, recent report by the ministry says that one when asked about the skill employers look for a potential employee they all had one thing in common everybody wants to work with a person that has a positive attitude especially when the companies that have put through challenges during the pandemic the need for resilience flexibility and active communication has been the top necessity some of the top skills that employers are looking for in terms of soft skills are problem solving communication active learning resilience flexibility digital dexterity analytical and critical thinking employees want to nurture their work environment with ethics and 
thought leadership the emergence of more knowledge oriented workshop is not work workplace is not inclusive to india alone the global demand for good communication skills problem solving capacity and agile adaptability are higher these qualities were given utmost importance at par with the knowledge that you gather as part of your regular discipline so whether you are a computer science engineer or <clears throat> bsc science or a management graduate the knowledge that you require acquire as part of your regular curriculum carries equal weightage as that of soft skill now most of the time we find that soft skills are not part of the regular curriculum in a university structure considering that one since since this plays a very vital role we try to offer many soft skill oriented courses communication skill improvement courses under nptel and these courses can be prescribed or the students may be motivated to take some of these courses so that they improve on their communication or soft skill as a whole as such okay in addition to that having knowledge of a particular subject may not be adequate in these days <clears throat> everyone wants that you should have expertise in a area that is not only one course but a multiple number of courses that will give you strength and say that okay you have got enough exposure on that related area now many of the students if they want to build a career in a particular area they do not know which are the courses that should be taken from nptel so that they can be expert they can be called expert or get a certification as an expert from that area to guide those students we have created a concept called domain certification <clears throat> under this we have covered 12 disciplines and we have identified 51 uh, domain programs where few core courses and few elective courses are marked for each discipline or each domain cumulative total should be of 60 weeks of learning and if you can complete 60 weeks of learning from the prescribed list of courses within a 3 years timeline with an average score of 60% then we tell that okay you have got achieved something to be a called an as, as, as an expert or you have got adequate domain knowledge so considering that it's only important that you should have 3 years time span average score 60% and individual score in the subject should not fall below 55 that's a mandatory part which are the areas that you have covered most of the engineering like aerospace biotech bioscience chemical civil computer science electrical for the faculty members faculty discipline is there humanities social science management mathematics mechanical metallurgy and materials engineering so far these all disciplines have been created but this is not fixed we will be continuing to add new disciplines as and when we have adequate courses from that the detailed list of the certification things are available here <coughs> if you go to that site sorry say if i go to this site nptel domain certification it will reach you here if you want to know more about domains and courses click on to this if say you are from say computer science you are looking for programming discipline expertise then which are the courses you have to do four core courses from the list this the list is given each course in the four courses you might have only one course or more than one course given okay you can do this course or this course <clears throat> okay and if the course is currently available for enrollment that is also reflected here you can directly join from here also in addition to that you have to do two elective courses from the available list so this is how you have to do domain courses once you complete within a 3 years timeline all the prescribed core and elective courses and completed 60 weeks of learning process within 3 years timeline and your average is not less than 60 then we provide you a domain certificate where you will have your name photograph domain that you have earned the list of courses that you have completed with your performance record okay this will be extremely beneficial <clears throat> how many people are doing who all are doing it's not that students are doing only these courses just because they 
gives them little edge over others in getting the placement. We find are actually doing these courses for the obvious reason that they want to update their knowledges and maybe uh, they will be teaching the new subject in the coming semesters also. So just to refresh their knowledge, they will be doing a lot of domain courses also. We find that this is the, this is the data that we compiled till uh, April 2021 or June 2021. We had 43 domain scholars from faculty group, 11 from student group, and taking others into account, we had 60 domain scholars. Uh, there were 91 candidates who, if they complete only one course left out, they will be completing the complete domain or 389 more students or learners will be completing the domain on completion of the remaining two courses. If we, have con if we calculate the score or the take the performance of the last semester results into account, this might have already been taken into account. Okay. Now, if you are planning for, say, gate examination, then we are actually uh, giving you an access to a portal where from you can directly get access to uh, gate related video lectures. We have got two types of mapping that is, syllabus type of mapping, mapping or question paper mapping. That is, I'll just take you to the gate portal, <clears throat> gate.nptl.ac.in. Here you have got gate syllabus mapping. If you click here, it will show you the disciplines for which the gate syllabuses have been mapped with the NPTEL lectures. Suppose you are from civil engineering and you want to prepare for the gate, click onto this, it will give you the <clears throat> course subjects that you are expected to be mastering in the, as part of the gate syllabus. Say you are engineering mathematics or say environmental engineering. Select the subtopic that you are interested to learn, say uh, air pollution. Under air pollution, you can get for the subtopics which we want to uh, say study from NPTEL, types and forms of air pollutants. It will lead you to the video lecture related to this. That's how you can get connected to the right type of NPTEL lectures, which will help you to master or get in-depth knowledge about the GATE syllabus. Okay. In addition to that, <coughs> we have also mapped it with video, video solution. That is, suppose you want to refer to previous year question paper and find out, okay, this was the question asked in, say, 2003, 2004, or 2015. Is there any NPTEL lecture that talks about this particular problem, this type of problem? We do provide that solution also. Suppose I select electronics and communication engineering, I can select year wise, say I select uh, 2020. Then first set here, I can find out here how the solution was conducted here. So we have actually provided option to connect to the gate portal either through year-wise question paper or through the syllabus so that you can get enough exposure on that and prepare better for the examination. Now for the credit transfer, if you talk about that, how UGC recognizes credits? UGC considers that 14 hours of learning should be equivalent to one credit. Now, we say that, okay, we are considering that we are recommending 10 hour course should be equivalent to one credit. How do we compute that? 10 hour course means there is 10 hours of lecture. So definitely a student or the learner will be spending 10 hours time in going through those 10 hours of video. Okay. After that, the student has to mandatorily complete one assignment and they may be expected to spend about an hour every week to complete the assignment. So if there are four weeks, they'll be completing 10 hours of lecture and four assignments in four hours there. So 14 hours of spending will be there. Considering only those two segments, we have added that, okay, the 14 hours means is one credit. That's our recommendation. But as you know, that there are other points also, the students will be referring to the supplementary study materials. They'll spend some, some, some time there. They'll also be interacting with the teacher and the teaching assistant through the forum, or maybe reading out the what other people have posted the queries and what is the response. So they'll be spending some time there also. Taking those into account, the UGC and AICT has mandated that, okay, the universities and autonomous colleges are free to add additional points and 
over and above what is recommended by NPTEL. Even our certificates background, we mentioned that the colleges can add one or two extra credit points. It is their prerogative. Okay. <clears throat> AICT and UGC had recommended 20% of the credit can be taken from the SWAM portal uh, way back in 2016, but after the pandemic hit, uh, this 20% was in, increased to 40% by UGC by its notification in March 2021. <clears throat> now, it only says that SWAM courses. Since NP NPTEL is one of the constituent of in, uh, SWAM, <clears throat> so all NPTEL courses qualify to be called as a SWAM course. Okay, and NPTEL courses can be taken as uh, for the 40% or 20% as the case move for credit transfer. What is the credit transfer process? <clears throat> you see here, uh, if you just go to the portal, nptl.ac.in, say here, then you go to nptl.ac.in, you go to nac.in, <clears throat> then NOC, and NPTEL online certification. Here you have got semester information. Click onto the semester information. Currently, we are in January 2022. Suppose your college or university is looking for credit transfer, and they really need to identify which are the courses that will be considered for credit transfer. It's not that they will be taking a decision only in November or December <clears throat> or in January. We usually publish the list almost six months in advance. So if you click here, July 2022 timeline, and here you've got the timeline as well as the course list. So this course list, the tentative course list, which are scheduled to be offered during July 2022 is already listed here. More and more courses will be added as and when the courses get up to. So the colleges which are looking for credit transfer mechanism, they can actually look for the courses and look for the NPTEL courses scheduled for the next semester from the portal. Then academic council can sit together and take a decision on what type of courses that should be considered for credit, whether it's a core course, elective course, or possible type of courses that can be approved. Once you take a decision on that, analyze the grading grade transfer mechanism. Sometimes many of the universities have taken a decision that whatever score is obtained in NPTEL, that will be directly reflected in the final transcript. But many of the time, universities have thought otherwise. They may think, okay, the IIT's uh, scoring pattern is a little tougher, so they may add extra points there and transfer it into the credit. So it is the decision of the university to take a final call. Also, uh, we do not provide any supplementary exam. Suppose there is a, uh, a student from final year <clears throat> who has taken the courses from NPTEL as part of the credit transfer, and he or she might have not done well in the exam to qualify to get a certificate. In that case, since this, until and unless the candidate completes this course, his final degree certificate is at stake and maybe he will be missing the deadline of the job. So that becomes a problem. So the university must formally say that what is the backup mechanism. If they are insisting for final year students to take the courses from the credits, uh, MPTL for credit transfer, then should, there should be some mechanism in place like in case the student does not qualify to get certificate from NPTEL, university may be able to take this examination in the line of NPTEL uh, assignments and clear the case. Okay, or maybe the students will be taking the course from here, solving the assignment, a part of that will be taking in the, taken as internal assessment mark, but the final examination will be conducted by the university itself. So there could be many models which have been adopted by different universities in a different way. That decision has to be taken. <clears throat> but what we suggest is that they can select a bucket of uh, a list of courses and leave the flexibility to the students to decide which one they would be interested to take instead of rigidly saying that this is the course you have to take. But motivating them to take or maybe approving the uh, domain certification program courses may be useful because in addition to getting the certificates or credits from here, they will also earn additional domain certification from, from the NPTEL, which can be a huge benefit for the students in the job market. It's not that uh, only universities or uh, 
autonomous colleges are looking for the credit transfer even iit system in iit system we have permitted our own students to take nptel courses for credits <coughs> like iit madras iit kanpur iit roorkee iit palakkad iit tirupati and iit bombay have already approved credit transfer for their students iit kharagpur has approved it for the working professionals joining for their phd program they don't have to come to campus for doing their regular course work they can do it from the online port platform only <coughs> based on the performance of the uh, students the some of the students are selected every semester to do internship under the faculty in iit system so that the top scorer or the toppers of the courses to who are from within top 1% to 5% two or three students from there are selected <coughs> and allowed to work under the faculty in iit system they will be working under the guidance of the faculty interacting with the research group utilizing the facilities in the iit system which will be a huge huge exposure for the student so on completion of that they will be given a nptel internship certificate conducted by certain iit under the faculty okay also to support the lodging boarding expenses uh, that they will be incurring in the during the internship program they are also provided some sort of a financial assistance to the extent of 5000 rupees per month <coughs> okay so if the student is working there's a maximum duration is 2 months it is conducted usually during summer or winter vacations when even iit students are not there in our campus they will be uh, accommodated based on the convenience of the students and the faculty maximum duration is 2 months for 2 months they can be given 10000 hours of reimbursement that is initially they will be incurring the expenditure later on on submission of the internship report to the authorities they will be reimbursed the amount okay also <clears throat> in addition to the domain certification on completion of a set of courses we also recognize uh, the top performers or the people those who are doing lot of courses and doing very well in that uh, they are identified like nptel superstar evangelist motivated learner enthusiast discipline stars nptel believers and so on so each has got a criteria you should complete as number of courses and maybe get a certain amount of grades so for superstars you might have appeared in four to six exams and has been topper in at least three exams that's all in addition to this recognition we also provide you some token memento like maybe a t-shirt a pen something will be sent from iit madras in the recognition of your uh, efforts okay <clears throat> this is the data how many people have been in these different categories okay we understand that soft skills are very very crucial for getting jobs so we try to help the colleges in training their students but definitely we have got more than 4500 colleges who are in our local chapter group we cannot invite all students and conduct the workshops so what we do first we select either they are these colleges are from tier 2 tier 3 cities and if they do not have the facilities and they are interested to conduct the uh, say soft skill training for the students <coughs> we arrange that one otherwise usually the toffer toppers or nptel stars are given this privilege so that since they have excelled in their uh, courses they get some advantage over others in getting the uh, soft skill training so it's only the toppers or the students from the tier 2 tier 3 cities if the colleges are interested we do provide that support there are two formats one is a, of a shorter version is of one week duration where we interact with the first we initially assess the employability uh, do the employability assessment just to find out the weaker points in the career path of the students guide them so that they can improve on that we interact with them in a group of 10 or maybe one to one group discussion takes place we conduct them online uh, say spoken english test and all after the course is done we provide them a certificate in that okay also we conduct the nptel soft skill training for 15 days where 20 uh, nptel stars to so top performers are actually invited per batch once in a month 
then again the same process goes but here it's little rigorous that is employability assessment test is done pre training and post training online mock interviews will be conducted will help them on their communication skill writing skill <clears throat> how to prepare their resume interpersonal skill and since they will be working uh, they will be looking for jobs through different social networkings how to get noticed in that so we'll be explaining them on this front and it's not only that okay they will be attending and uh, hearing the lectures delivered by some expert so just uh, to ensure that they are totally involved in the whole process every day there will be take away assignment so that they will be given some problem they'll solve that and next day that will be discussed by the faculty or the expert that's how they will build up their uh, deficiencies in this front and improve on their soft skill after doing this soft skill not only the soft skill there are certain courses for which we do provide uh, hands on lab training that is after completion of the course a set of students will be given an opportunity to come to a particular iit and maybe they are be there for about 5 or 6 days for first 5 days they will be given hands on training on different laboratory experiments at the end of the 6 day they will be uh, appearing for an exam and if they qualify for that exam they will be given an internship certificate these exams are uh, this uh, internship opportunities are uh, sorry in person lab certification program are conducted in different places chennai pune kolkata you can see the names we have reflected for different courses okay it's not that the students from particular age group they do these courses it is the students faculty members employed retired professionals school children everyone does it okay so that's how the age distribution shows we have got as young as 10 to 15 to uh, senior people like 86 to 90 years age group also people those who are in this nptel program okay so it's spread across the entire span of school children to uh, retired professionals very senior officials or senior people those who are having interest to learn new things it's not that they do one or two courses many people they do all six courses that are permissible in a semester and you can see yes more number of courses are done by uh, uh, more number of people have done one courses but if you see there are people who has done more than 30 courses together there is one candidate who has done even 47 courses but above 30 also you can find good number of people okay what are the people there these are the some of the names that you have highlighted uh, right from scientist to employed faculty members students who are doing this many number of courses okay and after doing the nptel courses and soft skill training are they getting benefit yes the data shared by the students they say that nptel provided recruitment opportunities for 64 candidates in different industries infosys capgemini tejas network billy matthew matri and also after soft skill trainings the students are able to get jobs in below mentioned companies like you can see uh, it majors are there you got other companies like lnt electrical and automation <coughs> local university in academics all fields people got employed or uh, definitely nptel trainings and nptel courses help them in getting better job opportunities for the faculty members uh, for the career progression nptel courses are offered for the uh, as per the joint um, um, say, say as for the mou signed by iits or the nptel and aict most of the you can say uh, but what is called elective courses and advanced level courses are recognized as fdp courses faculty development courses by aict and on completion of the aict fdp approved courses the faculty will be getting two certificates one by the one from nptel on course completion and if they have registered for the fdp certificate <clears throat> they will also get the sample certificate that is available in your screen jointly signed by the nptel coordinator from it madras and aict coordinator for this the faculty must enroll in the course identifying themselves as faculty and during the exam registration they may also, they must also mention they are looking for fdp certificate in addition to that uh, the spocs those who are 
working in the different colleges we you know these are the two colleges today who are organizing this program to help the or to recognize the efforts of the spocs we also provide some financial assistance to the spocs if any of their paper is accepted for uh, say any conferences conducted in iits or t4e conferences conducted anywhere then they are given some monetary benefit to support their uh, registration fees travel uh, other expenditures okay every month we invite the applications from the spocs and if they fulfill the criteria definitely we provide them that support that is a recognition not only to uh, so there is a recognition path not only to the students faculties for the career progression but also the spoc who works tirelessly at the back end to make this program more successful <coughs> fdp certificate they carry certain weightage like a four week course is considered as equivalent to a half fdp of one week eight week course is considered as full fdp of one week and 12 week course will be conduct considered as one and half fdp so nptel has been uh, targeting um, core courses elective courses job oriented courses soft skill training fdp courses tying up with agencies <clears throat> we are also trying to provide some guidance to the students if they want to select a particular career path how do they we invite different career uh, guidance experts from industry and ask them to give a lecture on a particular topic like how do i uh, if i want to pursue a career in uh, in a civil service <clears throat> police service or maybe i want to become a good programmer or i want to uh, become a say i want to join in film industry so what are the paths what are the things i should know to help know all those things we regularly conduct special series lectures i have shown you few snapshots we have conducted more than 230 similar lectures and these lectures are repository of these lectures are available in nptel you may also bring this information the faculty members may be uh, requested to uh, to bring this information to the knowledge of students so that they can at least go through these video lectures learn from the industry experts what is their expectation from the prospective employers local chapters you being the local chapters we know that local chapters are spread across the length and breadth of the country <clears throat> we have got currently more than 4400 local chapters this is uh, updated on a day to day basis so more than 4400 local chapters are spread across the country we do have uh, local chapters even outside the country more than 40 local chapters are existing outside the country and for within the india as we have discussed earlier we conduct the exam in more than 200 exam centers okay almost in all major cities the exams are conducted <clears throat> at least the state capitals exams are there okay uh, but outside the country we have conducted the exam in dubai abu dhabi sharja we have also tied up with uh, partners in colombo and jaffna in sri lanka so we are having a presence outside india also we are trying to conduct the exam either in the same format what we follow here the students coming into the exam center and writing or sometimes the internet based assessment where the students will be connected to us through internet and we will be monitoring their each and every activity through uh, remotely through camera okay so different means are taken to conduct the exam currently on outside the country the students based on the performance of the students of the local chapter the local chapters are also recognized Uh, after every semester we try to compile the data um, that is the performance of the students are just like if there are n number of toppers then they are given each topper is given some weightage of 10 a uh, gold medalist will be given that is elite gold type category students will get a uh, weightage of 8 silver will carry 5 elite will get 2 successfully candidate cases will be considered 1 <clears throat> we'll multiply the number of the such candidates from each college and find the total cumulative total the least weightage will be given for the number of student so it's not that the student a college can become triple a double a or rated rated college or perform show that they are doing very well just because they have more numbers it is primarily the number uh, more number is given on the uh, performance okay 
so based on this calculation we highlight top 100 colleges as uh, top performers and we recognize these colleges through different workshops that you conduct after the semester exam is over top 10 colleges are rated as triple a next 40 colleges that is 11 to 50 are rated as double a and 51 to 100 colleges are rated as a these rated colleges are felicitated in the spoc felicitation workshop conducted by uh, conducted on a journal basis by iit madras iit kanpur iit bombay and iit kharpur at different zones okay where we invite the heads of the institutions and we felicitate them in addition to these top rated colleges we also re uh, recognize the sincere effort of the best new local chapter colleges who are performing very well maximum number of faculty participation and based on the performance both within and <coughs> inside and top, outside top 100 colleges else is based on the rating point improvement if your rating was x and this time you have gone up on the table then we also recognize that effort and most of the colleges are primarily from the engineering background but yes there are many colleges from the art science group also they are doing very well and we give a special mention for that top uh, if they are from the inside and outside top 100 colleges they are also recognized separately if the college is doing consistently well in every semester then we also provide some recognition for them and mark them as lc star colleges so if a college is within top 100 consistently for few semesters we rate it as lc star okay uh, i think with this uh, we'll just uh, wrap up sorry uh, there is a translation effort that ministry wants that every nptl lecture should be translated into major indian languages and we are in the process we have completed transcript translation uh, into multiple languages for 179 courses for this we definitely look for your support if any of the faculty members who are connected today or if you are hearing this uh, if you are viewing this video later uh, if you are interested in joining translation work please get connected to us so that we can share you a small video to translate into a local language that is approved which will go for the review if the reviewer <coughs> approves that it is okay then only the next set of videos will be shared to you and you can get that thing done you'll be getting a recognition that your name will be reflected in the uh, translated booklet and also you'll be given some remuneration so financial compensation is also provided in addition to that there will be a permanent marking on the booklet that who has translated into regional languages translation work is going on in major eight languages bengali gujarati hindi kannada malayalam marathi tamil telugu but also three or four languages have been recently included including odia so if any of you are interested please get in touch with us we are uh, continuously in touch with our uh, nptl partners in colleges <clears throat> we publish all our informations through uh, Facebook handle, Instagram handle. We have got uh, connected to the NPTEL community through NPTEL HRD channel. Okay, so if you have got any query, do get back to us. Local colleges, uh, the, almost all um, uh, say IITs contact details are provided in the NPTEL site. You can connect to us. With this, I'll stop my presentation here. If there are any queries, I did not find any query posted into the forum, uh, YouTube chat box. Uh, if there is any query, I can take it. Otherwise, over to uh, the organizers. Thank you, Das sir. Uh, thanks for sharing such a nice and important information regarding swam nptl courses certificates and its portal and as you're talking about the queries in a youtube live so i read some queries which you already answered in your presentation related with the courses related with the pieces and all that and ignited mind is the most powerful weapon on the earth above the earth and under the earth and this is got through education Education is the most profitable investment for near future. It is a great honor and privilege to stand before you to deliver the vote of thanks. Today's guest speaker, our president, sir, 
ICFI University uh, to support in organizing this NPTEL awareness e-workshop and Dr. Bala Sahib Jadav sir, Principal Shri Shivaji College Parbhani. I must remark a proficient sense of gratefulness to our resource person, Mr. Shiv Sankar Das sir, for sharing with us some of the finest points about NPTEL portal. All the participants of this event are inspired and motivated by your highly sparkling words and the information shared by you related with the NPTEL SWAM portal. I take this occurrence to thank IIT Madras and the members of IIT Madras present here to manage this event. I want to extend my generous thanks to the participants as well. Now, I want to declare this e-workshop completed with the permission of guests. Uh, before you do it, I would just like to uh, compliment uh, Sri Sarkar Das for a very comprehensive presentation. I, I, I would say that I go Thank you, sir. Sat, sat through the whole presentation and he has covered the complete spectrum of what is on offer from NAPTIL through SWAM. So all those I have seen, uh, not very large number of uh, audience are there, I could see that. But I think uh, there should have been thousands of uh, students and faculties uh, listening to him because it's really, really a very knowledge worthy and a beautifully presented uh, uh, presentation where he covered everything, certification, degrees, credits, all the kind of courses, what is how it is gone about, how they, I mean, very exhaustive kind of presentation. Very well done, uh, Sarkar. Das, it's, it's really Thank good. You, good to hear you, and we are really uh, delighted, and we are very happy that you know you made this presentation. I don't know whether it will be right to request you if you can share this, you know, presentation. We can also take, uh, you know, local presentation of our for people who are not being able to attend it, so that you know they also get benefit out of whatever you presented. If it is possible for you, otherwise it's left to you. No, possible. no, sir. I, I can definitely share it. Nothing is uh, personal. Uh, nothing is confidential. Yeah. And the video link is also with us, sir. Video link is also the uh, meeting of this. Thank you very much. You have done great job, and uh, we, are, we are really happy. I think both Ikfai and Shivaji College, Ikfai University and Shivaji College, today were uh, privileged to hear you. Uh, our best wishes to you. Thank you very much, Jai Hind, and over to Dr. Saini now. Uh, thank you, sir. Mm. And thank you all for who presented here uh, for your, for this event. Thanks a lot. Signing out, sir. Signing out. Okay. Thank you, Vijay, sir. Thank you, Sip Sangar Das, sir. Thank you thank very you, much. Sir. Thank you, sir. IIT Madras can uh, go off. You can stop uh, streaming. Thank yes, you, sir. madam. Thank you very much. Studio team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Leave that. Oh.